This week on AOA Outdoors, we hear some tips from Steve Scott on planning your secret food plot. Then we head to Michigan to meet up with pro staffer Jamie McAllister as he tries his luck bow hunting for turkeys. Beautiful, Dad. A Way Outdoors is brought to you by the Whitetail Institute, Outdoor Edge Knives, Shadow Hunter Blinds, Swarovski Optics, Hunter Safety Systems, Muzzy, Matthews, Quickie Quiver, Ameristep, Marine Automated Docks, Larry's Taxidermy Studio. St. Joe River Bows, Botswana's Bow Hunting Supplies, Luminoc, Camel Creek Hydrographics, Civil War Magazine, American Digger Magazine, Mike Avery's Outdoor Radio Show, and A-Way Hunting Products. Innovative hunting products for today's hunter. I'm Steve Scott, Vice President of the Whitetail Institute of North America. Fall is a great time to plant your food plot. Depending on what part of the country you're in, it'd be late summer or fall when you plant them. Uh, it's a great time to plant fall annuals that grow real fast, produce a lot of tonnage, and gonna draw deer in the early season as well as the late season. It's an also a great time to plant your perennial crops such as your Imperial Clover, Chicory Plus, Extreme, Alpha Rack Plus, etc. It's a great time to plant those perennials because you get less weed and grass competition for the long haul. These perennials can last up to five years from a single planting. The perennial crops that you plant, whether you plant them in the spring or the fall, are gonna be there for you for just about the entire year. They're great for providing quality nutrition, high protein during the antler growing season, spring and summer, as well as when fawns are hitting the ground and the does are producing milk. Your fall annuals, such as your winter greens, tall tine tubers, pure attraction, those type products, planted in the late summer or the fall, they grow real fast, they produce a lot of tonnage, they get tall, they'll stand tall even under the snow. And later in the season, when a frost hits them, make sure you get on the downwind side and get ready because they're coming. The Whitetail Institute started the food plot industry over 20 years ago and continues to lead it today. One of the hottest things that going today is remote food plots. Small clearings in the woods, old logging roads, old log landing areas, just an old home site, just any small clearing in the wood where you can get into well, with a piece of equipment or even a hand rake, maybe a bag of fertilizer. We've got a product called Secret Spot. It's perfect for those areas. Uh, we've got one that plants 4,500 square feet, one that plants 10,000 square feet. So depending on how big your opening is, we've got a, pack, a, a bag of seed for it. Secret Spot does come in a Secret Spot four pound bag and also the XL, which is the 10 pound bag. Go spend a Saturday in the woods. You can create a food plot that'll attract deer for your early season as well as late season. One of the most important things with these type food plot products is to have something that's graze tolerant because they're gonna be smaller they're gonna be grazed heavily, so you want varieties, which Secret Spot has in them, that can withstand that heavy grazing and continue to produce. These small clearings are ideal places to ambush a mature buck, because he's got a lot of edge, he's not but a few steps away from security cover, so he can feel like he can get away quick. But if you can get on the downwind side of one of these things early in the morning or late in the afternoon, they're ideal places to take a good quality mature buck. You know, prime example of what will happen few weeks, few months after you plant these, depending on rainfall, after you plant your secret spot, is you're going to have trails showing up that may not have been there before where these deer are going to be coming and pounding on these small little clearings. It's a great place to set up downwind, uh, up the trails and or the uh, little plots. Great place to ambush a big buck. When you plant these small remote areas, you need a blend like secret spot that's got a variety of different seed varieties in it that are good for early season and late season and very graze tolerant. Like you see here, there's been a lot of tonnage taken off this field and it's still continuing to grow well. Uh, you get on the downwind side of these small clearings, it's a great place to see a lot of deer action and uh, have a good chance of killing a mature buck. Don't go away. When A-Way Outdoors returns, we meet up with Jamie McAllister as he goes after a Michigan gobbler with his bow in the first season. 
For over 20 years, our scientists at the Whitetail Institute of North America have developed proprietary seeds designed specifically for whitetail deer. Our products not only attract deer, but provide them with exceptional nutrition. We continue to research, develop, and test these one-of-a-kind seeds, and they can only be found in our Whitetail Institute products. Call today and we will send you free our Producing Trophy Whitetails DVD and six sample seed packets. All you pay is $9.95 for shipping and handling. Outdoor Edge's Game Processor is the highest quality 12-piece butchering set for deer, elk, game birds, and fish. Features the four essential knives for processing game, carbide sharpener, game shears, wood bone saw, rib cage spreader, cleaning gloves, carving fork, cutting board, complete with hard side carry case. Why pay a local butcher? Get the game processor and do it yourself. Call 800-447-EDGE or visit our website at OutdoorEdge.com. This portion of A-Way Outdoors brought to you by this fine sponsor. You have a hunting product invention and don't know who to turn to? Fred and Greg have been in the hunting product business for over 25 years and will guide you through the idea stage to production and marketing. Act on your idea or else someone else will come up with the same thing. This year, I drew the early hunt, uh, which is April 18th through the 24th. It's a seven day hunt. Greg and I hopped in the truck, rode around a little bit. It was snowing, it was blowing, windy, cold. We went into Beaverton, that's where Greg and I hail from, uh, to fill up my truck with gas. And we come across the, the bridge in Beaverton and uh, had white caps on Ross Lake. And when there's white caps on Ross Lake, you know something, you know, it's windy. So This is the guy who's robbing us <laughs> <laughs> with the gas prices. Filled up truck with gas, came back out to the property where we got the permission to hunt. Uh, just across the street, there was seven or eight toms in the pine trees, and uh, they were all fanned out. It was super windy, so that's probably why they weren't out in the field. They were hanging out in these pine trees, and uh, I figured, well, you know, when they're in there, they're fanned out, they're gobbling, and I figured, well, you know, if they're probably in there now, they're probably going to cross into my wife's cousin's property, which is on the edge of this hayfield so I called up Bob Evans and I said hey Bob this is Gene McAllister you know I hunted on your place last year I just wonder if I could get permission to hunt there this year and Bob said yep not a problem uh, anytime just give me a call so you know I'd like to thank him for that and uh, so I got a piece of property about half mile east of my house that I got permission to hunt as well from Greg Connors uh, we went down there we set up a, a Maristep Intimidator blind uh, we got that one set up and then came down to Bob's property, Evans, and set up the G30, Ameristep G30 hub line. It's gonna be tough to see in the morning, so I'm gonna pin this bag down where I wanna put my decoys. It'll be dark, so I'll know exactly where to shoot in the morning. We got those set up, and uh, you know, we were, we were anticipating high hopes for uh, that next morning because we just seen seven or eight nice toms all fanned out, probably 75 to 100 yards away from where we set the blind up. So we figured if with any luck, they'll either cross back across the road and roost on our property or roost on that property and come out to the hayfield the next day. The next day was supposed to be fairly nice. It was going to be cold in the morning and get up to about 50 degrees during midday. So uh, Greg and I got out there about five o'clock in the morning. We set up the we set up our decoys with the the turkey skins 
and uh, I had set a white bag out there the night before that way I could tell where exactly where I wanted to want my shooting window and about 15 yards I set up the decoys and uh, like I said we got in there about 5 o'clock in the morning Hey it's April 18th it's opening day of turkey season um, the wind has died down considerably compared to last night uh, there was a full moon out last night it was beautiful and I watched the turkeys go to bed back here about uh, 400 yards away I seen like five of them. There was 15 birds out here yesterday. I don't know if the other ones went to bed there also, but uh, we're hoping they're sleeping back here on uh, our property. Then they'll come out to these fields uh, today to pick at the field. So hopefully one will see our turkeys with the turkey skins on there and we'll put our A-way calls to the test. So stay tuned. Finally, at about 9 o'clock uh, a.m., here come some birds, and it was a big group of birds, and got the binocs up, checked them out, looked like they were all hens. I mean, there was four jakes in there, ended up being four jakes, but they must have been so immature you could barely even see their beards, and their heads weren't much different colored than a hen. But uh, they strolled out into the field, we didn't make any calls to them, we just wanted them to pass on through, and then maybe, you know, some toms were behind them, you know, and would come strolling in nice and easy. But uh, after a while, the four jakes broke off from the group of 15 birds there, and they come up and they started circling around the decoys a little bit, around the turkey skins. Looked like they looked at ease, you know, they were nice and relaxed, and probably five minutes went by, and finally they strolled across the street, and probably, I don't know, 10 minutes after they had left, Greg and I were sitting there, you know, kind of relaxing, and boom, we hear a gunshot from across the road. The guy across the street from us just shot. Uh, don't know what, you know, if he got one of those jakes. There's four jakes, 11 hands across the street. And uh, we are just heard a big boom, so. But we're going to keep our eyes open. Maybe uh, some turkeys will be coming over here from across the street. So, probably about 10 minutes goes by, and the guy across the road is up, walking up and down the road looking for the birdie shot. So, Greg and I said, well, great time right now to get out stretch our bones you know we're getting a little bit older you need to stretch out a little bit sitting in those little uh, camp chairs in the tent blind gets to be a little uh, stiff on your body after a while stay right there let's see if Jamie's luck turns around and has that big turkey walk in the range closed captioning for a way outdoors brought to you by this fine sponsor are you tired of gobblers getting spooked by your decoys? Turkey skins are real turkey feathers sewn on waterproof fabric making your decoy look like a real turkey. To get your turkey skins or for more information, visit awayhunting.com. This portion of Away Outdoors brought to you by this fine sponsor. The Whitetail Institute of North America, where research equals results. Call today and we'll send you our Producing Trophy Whitetails DVD and six sample seed packs. Free. All you pay is seven fifty shipping and handling. Get back in the blind. I grabbed the A-Way hen call, hen box call. I said, I'm going to give this a try. You know, I'd had the Turkey Trooper uh, 2000 Deluxe. I used that in the morning and I used the slate call, the fatal attraction. And had birds gobbling. We had birds actually gobbling to the north of us. And we thought we heard one way to the south earlier in the morning. So I grabbed that uh, box hen call. And I hit it one time, and Greg's like, did you hear that? And I'm like, no, I didn't hear it. And uh, Greg's always giving me a hard time about being deaf anyway, so uh, he says, I think I heard a gobble. So we had about five minutes. I uh, hit the head and the call again, for sure this time. I mean, they just lit up the woods. And uh, so I gave him probably another five minutes, seems like. It probably, probably was like five seconds, more or less. Uh, I'm a little impatient. So I hit it one more time and it just sounded like they were right outside the tent line. Well I looked out the window and they were just coming uh, from the woods out into the field.
toms were, it was like I had them on a reel, reeling them right into the decoys. They were coming into those turkey skins and I mean, they weren't slowing down. Finally, one breaks off the back of the pack and I smoke it right through both hips, right through the midsection of that deer. You can see the luminot bury right into that turkey. So it just drops about three yards away and the one tom goes off to our right about 25 yards and it's looking around wondering what the heck just happened. And the other bird's about 15 yards off to our left and it's looking around like what happened. And uh, all of a sudden that bird off to our left walks over and gets on top of my bird and it's like it's pushing the air out of my bird just sitting there with his hand just like massaging his back almost until it dies and you can see its head just flop down and uh, so finally we're sitting there I, I would guess at least a minute or two and talking in the blind you know giving high fives whatever and uh, finally I tell that bird you know get and finally it gets off my bird and starts walking away. Well, it's April 18th, I think it's about uh, 10 o'clock. I'm freezing, I'm shaking. Uh, I didn't dress quite accordingly. I had a fleece on over this, but I just took it off and uh, man, we had uh, three big toms. I didn't see what was behind them. I don't know if Greg's seen them on the camera there, if we got them or not, but uh, they all came in right to the decoy. And I drew back and it feels like I was drawn back for about a minute. I started to shake and I was asking Greg which one he was on and and uh, he says uh, take the back one if you can take the back one. So I waited for it to turn broadside and I let the arrow go and the thing didn't go five yards and then another big Tom stood up on top of him and was sitting there I don't know what he was doing clawing at him or whatever making sure he was dead I guess but man what an awesome experience. They came into these turkey skins I mean, they looked like they felt at home. They weren't uneasy. They were just, uh, they gobbled a couple times even. It was just a awesome hunt. I'd like to give uh, thanks out to Greg Abbas and Away Outdoors for giving us these turkey skins and giving us a chance to film for his crew this year, so. If you never shot a turkey with your bow, people, you guys, you need to get out there and try it one time. After one hunt, you'll be addicted. I got Greg going probably, I don't know, I can't remember if it was last year or the year before. He shot a Jake the first uh, day we were out. And uh, he's just as excited about turkey hunting every year as I am. It's almost like opening day of deer season for bow, you know, bow hunting deer, so. But uh, stay tuned to more A-Way Outdoors and you'll see us on uh, some more upcoming hunts. Closed captioning for A-Way Outdoors brought to you by this fine sponsor.
Outdoor Edge offers the highest quality hunting knives, combo sets, and butcher kits. Each knife holds a razor's edge to make field dressing and home processing easier. Ask your dealer for Outdoor Edge knives or visit our website at OutdoorEdge.com. Hi, welcome to this week's product review. We're in Clare, Michigan at Jay's Sporting Goods. We're with the owner of Shadow Hunter Blinds, Jim Bainbridge. Jim, it's good to see you up in my neck of the woods. Thanks, Greg. Pleasure, <laughs> pleasure to be here. It's uh, always good to come visit our friends here at Jay's and Hayway Outdoors as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, we've been, my father and I have been using your blinds for a number of years, and we know the benefits, but why don't you tell some of these folks here about the benefits about your blind? This one is a particular one. It's a 5x5 five five octagon blind. It's uh, a bow gun combination. combination yep. Right. You can get the same blind in all archery if you want to. Or you can get this blind in a 5x5, five five, a 5x6, five or a 6x6 six six model. It has uh, a new floor system on it. You've got the inner glass and a silent track. Let the glass go. It'll stay right where you want it to stop. You've got the outside shield. Shield keeps all the birds, the bees, bugs, weather, everything out of the blind that you don't want in there when you're not using the blind. You just close up and pops right in the hole. The interior of the blind has carpeted floors upper and lower shelf, got 360 degree viewing. Corner windows are good for peripheral vision too if you're just gun hunting and let it down just a little bit. Well Jim, besides this blind, what other blinds do you offer? Well we have various models to choose from. We have the 4x6s, 5x5s, 5x6 models, 6x6. And what is a gun blind? Gun blinds, or you can get most of those blinds any combination you want. Archery, gun combination, or all all gun or all archery. And crossbow? Yep, for anything you want. You can get handicapped, accessible blinds. Oh, nice. With a larger door. Yeah. If you'd like to find out more about the blinds at Shadow Hunter, make sure and visit his website. You stay tuned. Away Outdoors will be right back. Away Outdoors is brought to you by the Whitetail Institute, Outdoor Edge Knives, Shadow Hunter Blinds, Swarovski Optics. Hunter Safety Systems, Muzzy, Matthews, Quickie Quiver, Ameristep, Marine Automated Docks, Larry's Taxidermy Studio, St. Joe River Bows, Botswana's Bow Hunting Supplies, Luminoc, Camel Creek Hydrographics, Civil War Magazine, American Digger Magazine, Mike Avery's Outdoor Radio Show, and A-Way Hunting Products. Innovative hunting products for today's hunter. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Remember, you can hook up with Greg, Fred, and the entire A-Way team at facebook.com forward slash A-Way Hunting. We've also hooked up with the sportsmen in North America and we'll be giving away hunts, ATVs, and a whole lot more. Just go to awayhunting.com for giveaway details. Again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.